So we're going to move a little more in depth with Cisco routers and we're going to talk about the Cisco Secure Device Manager. Now the Cisco Secure Device Manager is a wonderful little piece of software. It is very old. Its latest release was in 2008. So depending upon when you're viewing this video, that's anywhere from four to five or six years ago. The Cisco Secure Device Manager has actually been superseded by two other pieces of software. The first is called CCP, or the Cisco Configuration Professional. The other is called the ASDM, or the Cisco Advanced Secure Device Manager, or Advanced Security Device Manager, depending on who you ask. However, when these exams were written, the SDM was the latest and greatest configuration tool, and so you may run across some questions on the exam about the SDM. And before we get too in-depth with SDM, I'm going to show you the lab topology that I've built for this section of the video. I have my lab network as this cloud object in GNS3. It's connected to this Internet Gateway router, and I'm calling it the Internet Gateway even though the Internet's like over here somewhere on my lab. But for the purposes of our little admin and client network over here, this router is how they will get out to the Internet. And so this router will do both DHCP and NAT by the time we're done with it. However, in this video, we'll show you what the prerequisites are to get the SDM running. And we'll show you the SDM interface and walk you around it a little bit. And then in later videos, we will actually configure services on our router using the SDM. Now the first step we're going to take for configuring SDM is preparing the router. Now most routers will have these configuration options enabled, but just in case it's not, here are the steps necessary. The first thing we have to do is turn on the HTTP server. So we say IP HTTP server an IP HTTP authentication local to tell the web server to use the local authentication database. We also turned on secure server, even though for the purposes of this lab, we won't be using it because it kind of drags down my virtualized router to have to do the TLS encryption. We also set the timeout policy to basically be 10 minutes or 10,000 requests. Now these configuration directives come directly from Cisco. There's a document on Cisco's website that steps you through setting up and configuring SDM, and those are the settings that they recommend. Cisco also recommends that on all of your VTY lines you enable Telnet and SSH because the SDM is a very versatile little tool. It can use either the HTTP server, it can use Telnet or SSH to deliver the commands to the router as you configure it in the console. Now those are all the commands that are required. When you go through the SDM setup, which we won't go through in this video because hopefully you know enough to click next at all of the screens by this point in your career, you'll be presented with an option to configure SDM on your router. Now SDM can run as a local executable as we have it installed in our lab server here. Or it can run as a Java executable on the web server on the router. It's the same interface no matter which way you go about it. I've opted to install it locally because again, it's a little quicker since my router is a piece of virtualized hardware. However, if this is the first time you've set up SDM on a router, I would recommend choosing the option to install on the router because it will enable certain encryption commands on the router and set up an SSH key for you if one does not exist already. The second bit of configuration takes place in the web browser. Now you go into the web browser and you'll go to the Internet Options. This is Internet Explorer 9, but the Internet Options is pretty much the same no matter what version of IE you use. You'll go to the Advanced tab, and under Security, you will check the box to allow active content to run files in my computer. In editing, if you wanted to create a circle or a call out for this, feel free. It also helps if you use a very specific version of Java that works best with this particular application. Now, as I mentioned, this application is very old, so the version of Java that it likes to have installed is Java version 1.4.2 underscore 06. I thought there was an option in here that told you what version you were running, but obviously not. And I know what you're probably saying, that's an antique version of Java. Well, this is an antique application, to be honest. So that walks us through the prerequisites for the Cisco Secure Device Manager. In the next video, we'll crank up the SDM and we'll walk through the user interface.